as I got closer to them, you could immediately smell the smoke uh, damage and you open that door and yeah, you could, it smelled like a forest fire. When you're looking at cars at salvage auction, you'll notice there are hundreds of thousands available at any one given time. Now with that, there are a whole fleet of supercars and exotics and luxury cars and normal cars and motorcycles, trucks, RVs, ATVs, anything you can imagine are on these salvage auctions. But what we like to deal in are of course the exotics and things with uh, little bits of history to them and things that we can find great deals on. And also as of late, you know, there have been some very, very high profile exotic cars worth into the millions being sold on salvage auction. We of course remember the fire damage Bugatti Chiron, the crashed Carrera GT, but one that uh, is less talked about would be the pair, yes, pair two, 2018 Londale G650 Maybach Mercedes-Benz SUV Safari G-Wagon Mobiles. I haven't heard anyone else talk about these two, and I'm here to share the story today because I was lucky enough to go out and see these cars in person. I know some of the backstory on them, but there's still a lot to still be unraveled, and that's where I hope the whole VinWiki community can shed some light. You and everybody can hopefully find these VINs and find out more of what happened and how these $1.5 million G-Wagons got, let's say, fire damaged and sent to salvage auction to be sold to the highest bidder. So these cars, extremely low mileage cars, 2018, so fairly new, but they have, one of them had 30 miles on it, I think approximately, and one had 60 something miles. So virtually brand new cars that, yes, incredibly low production, under 100 built. I'm pretty sure they were one of 99, if I recall correctly. I don't believe any were manufactured or sold to the US. I believe they were all in Europe and the Middle East. It's a very Dubai kind of uh, vehicle. And I believe these two cars were originally sold to Dubai and then somebody wanted them in the US and maybe went through the federalization process and the U, and you, you know, the DOT specifications to get them into the US. Somehow they were imported, but I think somewhere along the way with this import, everything went wrong. And I say that because these cars got cooked. I don't fully know yet exactly what happened, but all I know is these cars got to a place where the temperature was far, far, far what should uh, be expected of these cars and they sustained some fire damage. I highly doubt they themselves directly caught on fire. Whatever was around them caught on fire or got very hot and it resulted in them having some uh, burn damage. So there were two of them. There was a black one and a blue one. Both incredible cars. I mean, for $1.5 million, $2 million, something like that, their sticker price, obviously they're gonna be a work of art, an absolute dream to drive around. And think about it, these cars are like the length and the height dimensions nearly of, I think like a six by six G-Wagon, yet they have four seats and just two axles. So they are an absolute monster of a car. Me standing next to them, I'm six foot six, and they still, they make me look like a tiny little dude next to their huge towering, I don't know, eight, nine, ten, eight, eight or nine feet up. You have to climb up them to get to the roof. But uh, they were really cool to see in person. They were actually being sold at the IAAI branch in Los Angeles. So insurance auto auctions, they deal in all sorts of salvage cars. And oftentimes they have a lot of rare supercars and exotics. And this is I think one of the most expensive cars I've ever seen listed on the platform. So bidding was a couple weeks out and I'm like, okay, like when do you get an opportunity like this in life to go check these things out and to see them up close and personal and maybe bid on them and maybe win them. You know, I, I said, you know what, if they're worth one point, uh, realistically, now that they're used, maybe like 800,000 bucks or something. I think there was a couple sales, seven, eight, 900 grand. That's maybe what they realistically be worth here in the US. So I said, okay, you know what? If they look good and they drive good, which they were both listed as run and drives, I'm like, okay, maybe I can clean them up, fix them up, and maybe they would be worth 400 grand, half that, 500 grand, something like that. So if I can get them for 300 grand, maybe I can make a couple hundred grand on the deal. Like, let's do this. So I flew out to Los Angeles and uh, there they were. The door opened and I was met with them. And as I got closer to them, you could immediately smell the smoke uh, damage. And you open that door and yeah, you could, it smelled like a forest fire. But I'm sure there's ways to correct that and really make everything look 
and smell great again. But I also noticed, you know, they, they did what they could with the detailing. They really cleaned, up, cleaned them up pretty good. They didn't look good right after the fire event, but the people at the yard there spent quite a bit of time detailing them to really make them look presentable or as best they could. And they came out pretty nicely. But I did notice a lot of electronics and buttons on them wouldn't work exactly. So the convertible tops, I think I tried to hit those buttons. They didn't seem to want to go. The black car, the entire gauge cluster wouldn't light up. So even though the car would start, nothing would light up. You literally go to jump it, it'll fire right up. Sounds wicked. It had the six liter twin turbo V12, 621 horsepower, 738 pound feet of torque or something. Monsters of engines. And they fired up to life, sounded great. But the screen on the black one wouldn't light up. And then all of a sudden, like, the HVAC system had a mind of its own. It would just start blasting cold air conditioning, even though you didn't touch anything. And not sure if the radios worked. I, I think they did, but just all sorts of weird electronics wouldn't work. The rear glass partition behind the driver, I don't think that worked. Just little things didn't work, but plenty of things did work. So I'm like, what is going on? And Mercedes-Benz, you know, very technologically advanced. I'm sure it has a lot of electronics going through that car and maybe some modules got a little too hot or possibly when they were putting this fire out, the cars got a little wet and that contributed to some electronic issues, but just really bizarre. They would go into gear, they would move and they ran really well, but also in the engine bay, there were a lot of like clamps, like any engine bay, but they were like rusted out. They were like all corroded up. I'm like, what is going on? Why would, why would they be like, Middle East is very dry. Southwest California, very dry. Why are these things like corroding on all these bolts and clamps? And I still haven't been able to figure that out, but there's a theory running around that possibly, possibly, this is not set in stone, this is maybe my best theory too, is that maybe one of the surrounding shipping containers or pieces of the boat somehow caught on fire, which lit up a lot of these containers, create a lot of heat and smoke that got to these cars, and possibly they put out the fire using like seawater, salt water. Of course, a bunch of salt water on these components would possibly lead to some corrosion and oxidation on some of these parts. Maybe that's what I was told by one guy. And I'm like, oh, that's an interesting theory. And I heard from another guy and I kind of thought this for a while that they were, you know, they arrived at whatever port, port of Houston possibly. And then from there, they were getting ready to be put on like an 18 wheeler or some transporter and then the transporter caught on fire, resulting in the fire damage on the cars. I don't know which story is correct. It could be a completely different story. And that's what I want the VinWiki family to go to work and to figure out what exactly happened to these multi-million dollar trucks and really put this story together. But ultimately, after seeing them in person, the bids were at around 150 to $200,000. So I'm like, cool. I think we placed a few bids up to like 200, 225, just like no brainer, like good deals, right? But uh, we were quickly outbid and I realized real quick they were going to show up to bid on these ones. So I didn't even participate in the live auction because it was already at 300 and something thousand dollars. But I was happy to watch. You know, I want to see what these would go for. And ultimately, I think they may have sold to the same person in Florida, I believe was the final bid. One sold for four hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars. And I the black one. And I believe the blue one sold for a little more, maybe like four hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Plus you gotta consider there's buyer's fees. So approximately four, five, 6% buyer's fees, depending what level you're at. What is that? Almost $20,000 in fees. So now you're talking one sold for about a half a million dollars. Half a million dollars for a car with a salvage title, burnt and with some damage that still needs to be fixed. You know, plenty of the buttons, the electronics, the quarter panel, the carbon fiber fenders, right? Those got heat damage and they need to be refinished. Some paintwork needs to be done, some wheels. The tires just melted on the blue one. The spare tire was completely melted. The smoke damage in the interior needs to be addressed. So there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. So I was not a buyer at half a million dollars, but I, I at least gave it a few tries in the quarter million dollar range. Didn't come away with them, but I know they're probably gonna come back to life. Maybe they'll be sent back to the Middle East where the market is probably a little stronger for them. Maybe they'll stay here in the US, get fixed up. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but we gave it a try and it made for a great story nonetheless, even though we didn't win them.
We'd like to thank Patrick Adair Designs for their support of the VinWiki channel this month. Patrick and his team create some of the most amazing rings you've ever seen out of the most interesting materials on Earth, and I guess from space at times, because they do also use meteorites and superconductors and all this crazy stuff, interesting metals, even at times parts from broken exotic cars. This one was made out of some carbon fiber and some aluminum from the barrel of a broken LP640 wheel off a car I used to own. This year we're going to do some more exotic car part collaborations with different ring ideas, so be sure to stay tuned for that. You've also seen Patrick sitting right here in this chair telling some of his best car stories, and he'll be back to tell some more. Patrick has also documented his journey of entrepreneurism and some of their ring projects on his own YouTube channel, as well as some of his amazing car projects. So check them out and visit them at the link in the description below. Use the code VINWIKI20 for a 20% discount and thank them for their support of VINWIKI.